So let's talk about now the definition of prolotherapy and PRP and how does this actually work. If you looked at prolotherapy in the Webster's Dictionary, it'd say the rehabilitation of an incompetent structure such as a ligament or a tendon by the proliferation or new growth of cells. So it's working on trying to proliferate and, and regenerate and heal. If you looked at what PRP does, PRP is basically you do a blood draw, you extract from the blood the platelets and the growth factors, you take it to a lab and you concentrate it down to a slurry of healthy concentrated healing cells anywhere from four times to 14 times, concentra uh, times concentration, then you re-inject that back into the ligament, the joint, or the tendon. What they're finding is it releases growth factors. Those growth factors have a local healing ability in the body, but it also the PRP, when it does that, it recruits your body's own circulating stem cells to attach and start the healing process. So not only initiates the healing response, but it, then it jump starts and that's a catalyst for the stem cells to start their activity in that area. And it does this through the release of growth factors. So if you looked at what's inside a platelet, when they open up and they release, there's about seven or eight different growth factors that help with blood flow, cartilage formation, healing, um, collagen laying down. All those things are important for that whole healing process to take place. What about the history of PRP? So he, PRP goes back you know, 20, 30 years. It was first used in like dentistry, ENT, maxillofacial surgeries, started using it in neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery. They're finding when they, when they mixed the PRP with their surgeries, they had less infections, faster healing rates, better outcomes. Over the last 10 years, we've been injecting now PRP directly into joints, tendons, ligaments, spine, and finding that it actually heals and repairs the body that way as well without having to cut open. So you can actually bypass using an ultrasound in your platelets to get the body to heal and repair. Now stem cells is kind of the newest kid on the block. A stem cell procedure is usually taken from either adipose or from your bone marrow. The cells are then extracted from those uh, fluids and you take the stem cells out and you can inject those stem cells back into the tears, the arthritis area as well to get those stem cells to adhere and almost like you're recoding and getting the joint to heal there. So how does this work and does it work? That's a great question. Well, if we look at the evidence for these three procedures, starting with prolotherapy, there's a lot of what we call level one, which is the highest type of uh, evidence for prolotherapy on things like knee arthritis, for hand arthritis, for tennis elbow. All those areas have um, studies showing it is effective and it's a level one evidence, which is the best evidence we can get. Uh, PRP uh, studies in the Achilles tendon, showing that uh, PRP injected into the Achilles tendon or the tear helps to heal and regenerate. Plantar fascia, rotator cuff tears, elbow, knees, hips. I think knees and hips, this is the most exciting thing out there because now instead of just saying, oh, there's nothing I can do, you got to live with it, try a cortisone shot, pain meds, knee replacement, whoa. We have a whole new intervention that can get in there and actually help to regenerate, heal, and turn back the clock using your own body's healing cells. Now, stem cells, studies on the knee showing cartilage regrowth, uh, rotator cuff, uh, ACL, hip, and lumbar degenerative disc disease. All very good. A 2008 study on stem cells looking at knee osteoarthritis. What they found that is injecting stem cells into the knee significantly car uh, caused cartilage growth, decreased joint pain, and increased joint flexibility. This was in the Pain, pain Physician uh, Journal in 2008. Very respected journal. Great study. Uh, another study, uh, 2014, they looked at hundreds of stem cell articles out there. They concluded that stem cells have promising results and shows that there is an alternative treatment to arthritis. So great news. Uh, a lot of injections now uh, are being guided because if you're going to try to get these great outcomes, you have to make sure those cells are getting put into the right spot. So a lot of us are using ultrasound or fluoroscopy guided injections to get those cells into the joint or into the tear of the ligament to make sure they're very accurate. We no longer do just the blind injection hoping we get it there. It's guided right down to the spot. So the final part is the N. The N in the CFAN model is for nerves or nerve health. You have to have healthy nerves to get the body to repair. Again, good old wise Hippocrates said, look well to the spine for the cause of disease. He knew that if, if nerves in the spine wasn't working accordingly, nerves innervate everything, they're gonna have abnormal function of the things that they innervate. 
an anatomist in the 1800s, uh, Dr. Hilton, came up with what he called Hilton's Law. Hilton's Law said that every nerve that passes a joint sends a nerve into that joint and has an influence on the joint it goes by. Nerve goes down passes the elbow, has an influence on the healing and the health of that elbow, goes down to the wrist, has an effect on the healing and the health of that wrist. So nerves are very important for healing because if they're abnormally functioning, that area of the body is also going to break down more. So we have to address nerve impingement. We also have to address nerve herniations in our spine to make sure those nerves are healthy. We'll get better outcomes and a lot less pain. So to understand why nerves cause pathology, we have to talk about three different things. We have to talk about the mechanical interface, which is like the house that the nerves live in. We have to talk about the nerves themselves, the wires that carry information to places. And we have to talk about the tissue, whether it's a muscle, a joint, or a ligament, that that nerve innervates. All three of those things have to be dealt with, with nerves, pain, and pathology, for those nerves to affect the area and to affect the healing of that chronic painful area you have. So the innervated tissue is anything that the nerve goes into, whether it's the skin, the muscle, the bone, the joint, the ligament, the tendon, or the newest thing we're finding causing chronic pain is the fascia. It's kind of the, the white kind of tissue that covers your muscles. Tons of nerve endings and a lot of nerves go right through that fascia. So the fascia now is a whole new subspecialty they're finding. If we treat it, you can help with pain and make people more healthy. So when these nerves are getting pinched, why does it cause pain and why did, how does it affect degeneration? Well, let's look at an elbow. Uh, a nerve going by the elbow, if that nerve is getting pinched in a tunnel, for example, the ulnar tunnel or the carpal tunnel, when nerves get pinched with just a little bit of pressure on them, they start to release what are called inflammatory neuropeptides. Two of the main ones are CGRP and substance P. So when that nerve starts to release, because it's being turned on from compression, stretch, or trauma, it's going to release CGRP and substance P. Now, CGRP causes abnormal blood formation. It causes collagenolysis. So collagenolysis is breakdown of collagen, or breaking down of the collagen can lead to like tennis elbow. It causes calcification. CGRP lays down calcium. You don't want your body to heal with calcium. We often see on x-rays and MRIs, calcium in the tendons that's caused from the CGRP effect of the nerve being compressed. It also causes stress fractures by activating a cell called the osteoclast. Osteoclast breaks down bone. So we don't want CGRP. If there's a way to block it, that's how we heal the nerves. We'll talk about that. Those compressed and those irritating, those injured nerves where they're getting compressed, whether it's in the spine, the periphery, or on a tunnel, also releases substance P. Substance P causes swelling, redness, irritation. It causes hypersensitivity to the skin around where that substance P is at. They also found with people with chronic pain have a lot of substance P circulating through their system, making them feel apathetic and fatigued as well. So kind of that, that low energy and that fatigue that goes with chronic pain could be coming from these nerves that are releasing a lot of substance P in their body. How do nerves get injured? You can have an acute injury like a whiplash. When the whiplash not only sprains those neck ligaments we talked about, but also stretches the little nerves that are all over your neck as well. When they get stretched, they start to release the CGRP and the substance P, which leads to the damage of the things we talked about before. And it does this through stimulating a receptor on that nerve called the CRP1 receptor, the trip v one receptor. Um, it's actually more of an ion channel, but when it's activated, that channel, it releases the substance P and the CGRP, which leads to pain, tissue degeneration, and joint degeneration. So these nerves can get pre compressed in probably over 30 different tunnel syndromes, from thoracic outlet syndromes to the suprascapular nerve impingement, to our ulnar nerve, to our median nerve. There's different entrapment syndromes around our stomach and around our groin, our low extremities like the, the uh, lumbal sacral uh, tunnel syndrome. Uh, the iliacus muscle can pinch the nerves. You can get a femoral nerve impinged here at the adductor hiatus where there's a nerve called the uh, saphenous nerve comes out, which can cause knee pain. So all these things can go through different tunnels when those nerves come through tunnels, they can get compressed, they can get scarred in, they can get fibrosis. So we have to address tunnel syndromes when we're uh, dealing with chronic pain as well, because if we miss that, we're going to be missing a very common source of pain. Well, how do you treat these tunnel syndromes? Well, you can go in with the ultrasound, visualize the tunnel. For example, the carpal tunnel is a really easy example. See the nerve where it's getting compressed in the tunnel. It might have some fibrosis and scar tissue around it. Use the ultrasound in the nerve, in the needle, and you dissect and you free that nerve up again so it can freely go through the tunnel when it's not compressed, no longer releases the neuroinflammatory peptides, which leads to less pain, but also more healing. 
So we use different things to block that. We can use a substance called mannitol. We can use dextrose. dextrose. We found that sugar analogs bind and block that TRPV1 receptor, which blocks the release of those neuroinflammatory peptides. So different things can be injected, which can block it. You can also use topical things. A new study came on mannitol topically for pain, blocks the capsaicin receptor, which seems to be the TRPV1 receptor. It can also help with pain. So there's some topical things we can do, just rubbing it over the area that can get those nerves healthier. So how do you treat the nerves? Well, you gotta treat everything. So we talked about the mechanical interface. You gotta talk about functional movement and alignment and posture. That's gonna unload some of these nerves. Sometimes we'll do bracing. We'll unload the, the nerve or the carpal tunnel with the right bracing. We always talk about weight loss because weight loss decreases compression of nerves where they're going through tunnels. When it comes to the nerve itself or the wire going and innervating the tissue, we can do nerve hydrodissections. We go in with the ultrasound, we free the nerve up, actually visualizing the nerve with the ultrasound. We can do peripheral nerve or perineural injections around the nerve itself to get the solution to bind to the nerve and block that receptor. And then once the nerves are healthy, then we can go inject with our PRP or our stem cells the innervated tissues with the PRP and the prolotherapy to regrow that cartilage or that tendon. But if we aren't treating the nerves first, it's probably not going to heal as well because of that negative effect of compressed nerves around joints. So nerves are important. Um, to get the body to heal, there's a lot of different ways we can do it. We talked about the, 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 the hydrodissections, the perineural injections, the topical creams. All these need to be done to get optimal outcomes. So just to kind of uh, give you kind of a framework here, the first thing we need to do is we have to restore that cell health. That includes weight loss, fitness, nutrition, optimizing your hormones. The cell health is the basis for the rest of the body to heal on. Then we're gonna work with that functional movement. We're gonna get you moving right. We're going to get your posture right. We're gonna get you into physical therapy, get your alignment right. Because it's gonna take the pressure off the nerves, the joints, and get things more strong and stable. The next thing that we probably deal with would be your nerves, making sure that the nerves are healthy that innervate the joint that we're going to treat. Finally, we'll treat that articulation. We'll try to regenerate and heal using prolotherapy, PRP or stem cells, kind of in that order. So it's cell health, functional movement, nerve health, and finally addressing the articulation. So really, the CFAN model, that's really the, the answer to our healthcare crisis. We can rebuild degenerating tissue through nerve treatments, epidurals, hydrodissections, and freeing up these entrapped nerves. We can rebuild the tissue with prolotherapy, PRP, and stem cells, and then we can restore the body back to that healthier level using medical fitness with exercise and weight loss, nutrition. We can optimize the hormones and the micronutrient balance through analyzing lab, te lab tests and balancing those out. We can do physical therapy, stress reduction. All those are needed for optimal health. So I hope this answers some questions. Thank you.